Okay, uh, where are we? July 3rd, 2023. An update on the handheld band mill is long overdue. And uh, we still have a skill saw mounted on a uh, bracket sort of thing. Okay, the, the backbone of the saw is two uh, sliders, what do you call them, for, for a regular Alaska mill, three feet wide, long, and there's one at the front and one at the back. And yeah, then we've got a uh, regular skill saw is driving it. I have a link belt here. It's lower friction than the regular B belt. That's around a two inch pulley and an eight inch pulley. The band wheels are made of uh, um, UHMW. That's a extra high density polyethylene. And uh, it happens to be very slippery. And then we have uh, the sort of next key after the tube. Uh, bands, uh, uh, Alaska mill pieces, is these two plates, one at the left and one at the right, and welded to those are four uprights, one at the back and one at the front on each side. And those are the basic support for the guide wheels, which are still the my uh, unique combination here. They're uh, attached at the front and they're free to pivot. And what that does is uh, if the cut goes below the cut line, the band aims itself up. And if the cut goes above the band line, the band aims itself down. So it's uh, self-leveling uh, or self-guiding. It's uh, fe got feedback. Let's see. Uh, pillow block bearings. Uh, those are um, H uh, compression fitting couplings. You could use anything like uh, weld on hubs or something. Uh, this is three quarter inch. What else is <laughs> all the little details? So we've got uh, some uh, sort of bearings that were made for rolling something, and that's what I've got for the band. And then behind those I have, well, above that I have a little, just plain regular bearing, and below that there's some, uh, uh, what are they called, uh, end, end bearings and uh, washers. So there's a washer on the inside that goes against the band, and this washer on the outside keeps the thrust bearing from coming off. One of those on each side now. And uh, with the eight uh, pipes, which I used a uh, three-quarter inch uh, square tube, and they should be eight inches long. These, This side I made them eight inches long. This side was seven, but it, then uh, this hits the ground, so it should make them eight inches long so that this is not hitting the ground. Um, then we have, let's see, what else have we got? We've got the handle up here. When you go to change the band, uh, you loosen off the things at the end that I haven't shown yet, and then you take out the three screws out of this, and the screw out of this, and then this whole cover comes off along with the handle and you can slip the band out the back in the gap between here and here. Now the band tensioners, are, uh, they go to the bolts on the uh, pillow block bearings and there's an L bracket here and you tighten this here and tighten the other side so that adjusts both your tension and your tracking with two screws kind of in combination. Oh, and in case uh, 
changing the band sounded too easy there. Forgot. <laughs> you also have to take off, loosen one screw on the, the lower foot and take the other one off and then you can slip the band out from there. And you also have to loosen or remove at least one of each of the guide wheel things because it won't won't come out. Then you can remove the band. Now for the uh, guides that rest on the piece of wood, we have uh, these now, and uh, the, these foam things are just knee rests, because I push this with my knees, it's easier than pushing it with your hands and arms. And so, to, to raise this, and, and this part here is uh, in, in a little enclosure sort of thing, and, rather than fixed, because as you adjust the tension, this is going to move back and forth a bit. And in fact, you can change the whole thing. You can put on different length bands. I, I had up to 93-inch bands on it originally. Now I'm using, what is it, 80, 86 or 85 or something. It was, I think it's custom length I picked. So, and then uh, to actually adjust these, you just uh, loosen a bolt and move it up or down, bolt it on each end, and then, of course, on both the front and the back. So you do have to get it done, and you have to get it so that it's uh, even at the front and the back, pretty much. At least it helps. Uh, the automatic adjustment will take care of a little of it. And then you can... Uh, mine goes blank. Um, yeah, then you get get the right height for your, the piece of wood you're going to cut. I think that pretty much covers it. Oh, here's a... Uh, I had some uh, CNC cutouts done in stainless steel, but uh, I haven't uh, put them on the saw yet. I'll put a link to the actual What's it called? X DX file or DXF file, so that uh, you can have these made, and then you you're well on your way to to making the band mill. Now another piece is is this adjustment here, and that can let you adjust between the two wheels, because there's no point having it any wider or at least not a whole bunch wider than you need to have it. So you can move this wheel back and forth. So what I'm going to be cutting is a 2x4 but with a 2x6 guide on top. So if I make that wide enough for a 2x6, that should be about right. If you're cutting a big log, well, a small log <laughs> a medium small log up to about 16 or 17 or 18 inches. I don't think I've ever cut more than 13 with this, so I don't know. And that was alder. don't know actually what its maximum cut would be, except for the distance between the two wheels can be up to about 18 inches, and probably a bit more or less, depending on the length of band you use. Uh, something that would be tremendously helpful for setting your depth of cut would be some uh, markings on each, all four posts, so you can you can get them all even and and uh, set your depth of cut nicely. Do a bit more detail here. Uh, this side, the height adjustments are just. Uh, a U-clamp around the square tube and into the, the uh, what should I call it? And uh, then this side, though, uh, the, this plate has to be free to move back and forth. So this is a very oddly cut piece of uh, of tubing that that fits over top of this tubing, 
and it's bent around here so at the bottom it clamps onto the U-bolt and then the U-bolt has its own bar going across there. That's all a little convoluted but uh, there's probably more than one way to do it. Now for the tensioning, obviously it would be good to have something to keep the bolt from turning while you're tightening the wing nut. Also, these wing nuts, these whole things are too small. It, it, I think uh, I'd go for at least three-eighths in here and, and bigger wing nuts because it's a hell of a torque you have to put on there for, for hand torque to tighten the band adequately. And uh, you might go for some uh, kind of knobs that might thread their way on there too. That would probably be better. And if I recall correctly from <laughs> a couple of years ago when I was last using this, uh, it, if you tighten this one, the tracking moves forward. If you tighten this one, the tracking moves backwards. So it's tighten away, <laughs> loosen towards. All right, and for this plate to slide back and forth to tension and and uh, align the band. Um, the, there's only two nuts that go through into the backbone at the front end of the uh, do, 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 pillow block bearing and uh, they're set up with washers so that they're not gripping this. They can slide up and down in the slot. Even that, that it doesn't slide as well as it might. Now about the only thing I've wanted to cut for a while is the, this 4x4, four four. I'm going to make it into 2x2s. Two twos. saw a horse spit like tall to get my legs around, so I'll be doing it the, the push by hand way, I guess. good so far. Somebody said I should have cooling water. Uh, I've got a hole for it here, but I haven't hooked it up. The band generally only gets pretty warm if the uh, if the teeth aren't set well, if it's lost its set on the teeth, or if uh, the tension's too low or it's really dull, things are binding. goes pretty easily with just a 4x4. Four four. about at the end now. I always use a guide board on top because one thing I don't have yet is I don't have anything going across here to stop this end from 
from falling down off the end of the board. So even though the, the 4x4 is probably at its own great uh, smooth enough board to cut from, I've got a, a longer 2x6 on top. Two, two two by fours. Get that off there. Low cedar, and I didn't have any, so got these four by fours from a mill. And there's the original sawtooth marks from the mill. And here's the sawtooth marks from the handheld bend mill. Okay, now I'm going to split the 2x4 into two 2x2s. Two what a great job for a sawmill, eh? Hey? It all looks a little unwieldy to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, nine cuts later, there's the pieces for my chicken yard. The plan to commercialize the handheld band mill and make it into a kit uh, has not come to fruition. The fellow that was going to do a lot of that uh, got uh, sidetracked by COVID and a number of other things. Not that he had it. Um, he couldn't get his engineer into Canada and now he's busy with other things. So. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed and got something out of the video. If you did, uh, please give me a like and uh, welcome your comments and questions below.